Greetings viewers and welcome to today's info sharing session. We'll be covering the email settings feature within Sage Trend Evolution. Now, let's just, before we begin, we need to specify which emailing platform are you using to send your emails within the organization. So if I, for example, go to administration, I'm going to go to system configuration, system wizard, and we've got the option to specify our emailing platform. So either SMTP, Mappy, or Microsoft Outlook. So if I, for example, make use of SMTP, I would need to complete a couple of configuration settings, and I could then use a test connection. And Mappy and Microsoft Outlook, you'll notice is that there's a test email option. So always good to make use of the test email feature just to to, to uh, confirm that there is a communication between your evolution database as well as your emailing platform. And also just be aware that the outgoing port for emailing within the application is port number 25. Right, so once those have been set up, we can then move on to the emailing process. Now, you'd normally really be emailing either reports or uh, source documents out of your evolution database. And let's first just start with our reports. If I, for example, go to inventory reports and I'd want to maybe email an inventory listing report, I go to my listing report. I would then specify my filter options for my report and I would then go into my emailing tab. Now on the emailing tab, I can specify to email this report after printing or previewing. I have the ability to specify a default attachment format. So I've got a couple of options to select there and I can specify. I also have the ability to specify if I'd like to zip the attachments or not. And I can specify a default subject. Now, very importantly is that um, you may want to, for example, use a certain layout when viewing, for example, printing the report. However, when emailing, you may want to make use of your special or email a customized layout or a different layout. So if that's the case, you click on the email different layout option. And then on the drop down, you are able to specify or select um, a different layout from your catalog of forms that you've customized for this particular report. And then you can specify a default message. Right, so back to my report, once those email options have been specified, and I'm going to specify a filter option for my report. And there we go. And if I now preview the report, I've got my details. And if I close the report after previewing, I now have my email screen where I can specify details of the recipient. I've got the attachment being the report name and as a PDF attachment, and I can then enter information that I can make in, in, in the email subject, as well as information about the report that I'm going to be emailing. And simply a case of sending and the process is then be completed. Now, this email tab is applicable to all reports that you email without through, through, uh, from Evolution. So those details you could set up for your different reports. For example, specifying the layouts, etc., and the different attachment formats if required. Right, so that's applicable to all reports from within Evolution when emailing. The next option would be to go and email source documents such as invoices, credit notes, return to suppliers, etc. Before we do that, we need to go look at a couple of parameters on the supplier and customer accounts. Under customers maintenance, I'm going to go into customers and I'm going to go and find a specific customer account, edit the account. And firstly, under the contact details tab, we have the ability to specify an email address. So you'd obviously specify the email address um, in order for you to contact this particular customer. And then we have under the bank and other tab, a few important settings. So for example, you have the ability to specify, do you want to print statements or print an email statements? 
and the same would apply if you want to print an email invoice and credit notes. So those options can be selected and deselected. And then also we have the ability to make use of email customer and link people. Now, within, for example, supplier records and customer records, you are able to go create people profiles. And these are just um, persons that you or contact persons on the customer at, at the customer or at the supplier. And if you set up or, for example, create a person profile, we've got the ability to specify the email address and specify if this person is to receive statements and source documents via email or not. So, for example, you may, uh, at, a, at a customer, you may, for example, email, for example, the source documents to a certain person. However, uh, statements may be need to be emailed to a different individual. So you can set up those details there and then specify which documents are going to be sent to which individuals at the organization, at the customer, at the supplier. Right, so once those have been set up, and if I go back to bank and other, you see that I can now specify email customer and link persons, and that's applicable to statements as well as to uh, invoice and credit notes on the customer side. Right, so those details can be set up on individual customer accounts and I can update the record. If I now revert back to my customer, um, I'm now going to go and email an invoice. I'm going to revert to inventory transactions and invoice. And we are able now to specify email parameters per individual source document. Under my print print options, I'm going to go through to print invoice. And under the email tab, you'll see that we've got the same options available with our reports. So it's a case of email this report after printing or e printing or previewing. We can then specify our default attachment format, uh, zip the attachments or not, a default subject. And once again, we can then specify a different layout and we can then specify the relevant uh, customized invoice that we want to use when emailing, as well as a default message. So those details will be set up per individual document and per individual source document, shall I say. And we can now proceed and process the invoice. Under my customer, I'm going to go and specify the customer. Specify items on my transaction. Right, so I've processed my invoice. I've got my details there and I'm going to process the transaction. Print the document. And I've got my details there. I preview the document. If I say close now, the emailing screen appears and I've got my Details. Now, what you notice is that this particular customer has specified an email address on the customer's account. So the system has automatically brought in that contact email address on the emailing screen. I've got details about the attachment, being the document number, the customer code, etc. It's in a PDF format, and I can then insert uh, information about the uh, about the transaction and and the subject, as well as under the uh, content of the email, and I can then send the document. And the document will then have been emailed to the customer. So that will be applicable on the relevant documents when processing source documents. If I then revert back to my supplier side, and let's just go through to our um, suppliers, suppliers, maintenance suppliers, and I'm going to edit the supplier. So under contact details, we'd specify an email address for the contact email address. And under bank and other, we've once again got the options to specify either to print or email a written advice, as well as printing or emailing of GRVs and return to supplier documents. We can also make use of the email supply and link persons. Uh, if applicable. So once again, under the people tab, we could then go set up um, relevant P 
people profiles and then specify to email source documents or statements, etc., remittances. And we could then go and incorporate that under the bank and other and select those relevant options to emailing supplier and link persons. If I then revert back to my inventory and just look at the supplier documents, so inventory transactions. And I'm going to go, for example, to goods received voucher. Print and print goods received voucher. We once again have the emailing option and which is the same as we had when on the invoicing screen. So applicable to all source documents when emailing those source documents. Right, so that's the supplier side of, of source documents. Now, very importantly is that when emailing statements or when running statements for customers, we have the ability to email the statements. And if I therefore go to customers maintenance and I go to my reports, statements, I'd specify in a report the relevant uh, filter options there. And what you notice is that there's a section there for the distribution. So I could either use the include email only customers in preview, include email only customers in print, and also email customers individually. So I've got those three options to make use of it, emailing statements. And also very importantly is that the system does check or ensure that there is an email address set up for the customer when uh, emailing statements as well as the emailing of documents, et cetera. So just be aware that those parameters, for example, email address has been set up on the customer account and supplier account. So those are the options available in emailing statements. And once again, you've got the details, same details applicable with regards to our reports, with regards to zipping attachments, default attachment formats, et cetera. Now, there are a couple of other areas where you would need to specify email addresses. So under administration, and for example, if I go to my an agent, we can set up an email address under the contact option. There's an email address for an agent, set up those details there. And very important to set up an email address for an agent Specifically, if you are going to be making use of the contact management module and be creating incidents and allocating them or assigning them to relevant agents. So, as you can see, a couple of options available with regards to emailing. It's firstly, specifying the emailing platform and setting up those details, ensuring that you are using port number 25, and then the options available when, for example, using the emailing of reports as well as the emailing of source documents. So specify the details there and being able to email those reports or, or source documents once the parameters have been set up for emailing. Thank you for tuning into our presentation today. It's over and out for me and goodbye.